In this video, I am pitching my 1972 Invercar called Tuk in a head-to-head -head battle with a brand new Tuk Tuk. This is a Bajaj RE an auto rickshaw from India. Uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's start with the similarities. Both vehicles are three wheelers. Both vehicles have handlebar controls. Both vehicles are rear engine. In the case of my Invercar, it was designed for wheelchair users. So it has these handlebar controls. It has a rear mounted air cooled 500cc engine, flat twin, driving through a CVT gearbox to the rear wheels to make it twist and go, make it as simple as possible for the people who had to use them. It is horrifically unstable in the slightest crosswind. Uh, I have driven this very Invercar at 70 miles an hour, which was absolutely terrifying. So uh, it's definitely an interesting vehicle. Whereas the Bajaj here, the auto rickshaw, designed pretty much as taxis in India. Uh, originally Bajaj formed in uh, the late 40s. By the late 50s, they had a license to build Piaggio or Vespa vans and uh, bikes and scooters so uh, this developed uh, i've driven a 1969 one which was um, their first move away from that original uh, piaggio design but it's one that's just kind of evolved and this is the latest incarnation the re it's a bs6 which i think refers to the engine which is also at the back but the engine in this one is a single cylinder 236 cc engine and uh, I will need the keys and to undo these knobs to show you. Before I show you the engine, a huge thank you to Tuk Tuk Time for uh, lending me this example today. They're based on the Buttles Caravan Park, which is why there are caravans about. Uh, here down in Pembrokeshire, I think we're in near Tenby and Saundersfoot, lovely part of the world. Uh, so thank you very much, Tuk Tuk Time. And there we go, here is the engine, 236cc single cylinder with fuel injection. That's a throttle body there, tiny little throttle body. And uh, sending its power forwards to, um, I think a dog clutch-esque type motorbike gearbox, which then takes the drive to these tiny, tiny rear wheels. Uh, the one I drove that was from the 1960s had the engine underneath the driver, so it was horrifically noisy. Uh, this one will hopefully be a bit quieter. It'll be interesting to see how they've refined the design. But yes, you've got these little thumb screws that go over here as well as the lock. So it's a very secure little thing. But there you go, petrol. Because in India, you can specify uh, the, an engine that runs on CNG, that's compressed natural gas, or LPG, which is um, liquid petroleum gas. So uh, there are alternatives, but they're all about 10 brake horsepower, I think the um, CNG one's slightly less, the LPG slightly more, so between 9 and 10 horsepower and driving these absolutely tiny little wheels. Look at them, aren't they sweet? Funnily enough, you also need a key to get into the engine bay of the Invercar. And now we're in, there is the Boxer engine. So this is 493cc and getting on for 20 brake horsepower. And it drives forward through a CVT gearbox to drive the rear wheels. Coil springs, it's even got spax dampers. It's super, super posh. Obviously a bit dirtier because Tuck is a long way from brand new, but a very smooth engine, uh, I think. Uh, that makes rather pleasant noises. Moving inside, uh, it's quite easy to move inside because there are no doors. There is some roll down weather protect protection, but um, I'm wearing a raincoat. I don't care, we're not gonna bother with that today. You see the, the rear actually has these little doors, uh, which is very sweet. And uh, crash protection, maybe not brilliant, but nor is the crash protection all that good in this. That's just a fiberglass skin. And there is almost nothing ahead of the driver at all other than a fuel tank and a front wheel so i wouldn't want to have an accident in either of these down here we have the handbrake uh, down there we have a foot brake and uh, this lever you pull up that lever to go backwards and it uses the same four speeds all very intriguing if we jump around the other side we we've got some controls for the indicators wipers here horn, twist throttle, just like the Invercar, but a manual clutch. 
So that's the clutch and that's the gear selector. So you go that way for first, like so, and then two, three, four the other way. We'll demonstrate more once we're underway. It's even got hazard lights, which only work when the ignition's on. Oh no, there we go. And see, it's only got 54 kilometers on the clock, but you know, 12 volt power outlet, all mod cons, single wiper. Doesn't appear to have any screen wash, which I find slightly peculiar. I thought they would have insisted on that on a UK vehicle, but of course it's not a car. It is um, an auto rickshaw, a trike, a three wheeler. Now this lever down here is very interesting because while it has an electric start, you can pull this to start the engine. We will try that later on and see if that works. But you can see the brake hydraulics right in front of you. I think under here, uh, there might be, uh, oh, there we go. You got a spare wheel and a battery under the driver, which is far better than having the engine down there. I must admit that seems infinitely preferable. But um, if we jump into the back, it seems to be a slight assortment of things. It's re only recently had the um, seat belts fitted. It is, by all intents and purposes, a brand new vehicle. But if I hop in, oh, oh, squeeze. Not actually the most commodious taxi I have ever been in. But we've got a bit of weather protection here as well. That's also useful from a COVID point of view because it separates you from the driver, but plenty of fresh air as well. So in some ways, a better taxi. It's not the most comfortable seat, but uh, it's not the worst either. You can roll the whole roof back, should you fancy. I'm not sure I do today. Engine down there, bit of storage on top. So uh, a very characterful little vehicle. And of course, there's one key difference. I can seat three people in the tuk-tuk, whereas tuk here is only a single seater. In fact, passenger carrying is forbidden and it says on this little plaque uh, three wheels drum brakes that's the same for both of them but let's see how inside the, the um, Invercar compares for a start we got the luxury of actual doors and I've even refitted the window on mine so you pull the handle like that and then the door slides like so to enable entry to the vehicle uh, the seat will actually slide over to the far door so you can transfer from your wheelchair, slide the seat in, then you've just got to haul the wheelchair in and store it next to you, uh, sort of willy-nilly. There's a seatbelt, which there isn't in a tuk-tuk. has seatbelts in the back, but not in the front. A little bit of storage here, um, just above the transmission, and handlebars as well. In this one, this is your handbrake, uh, twist throttle. I've added this little motorcycle grip that someone sent me. That just takes some of the labour out of holding the throttle open you can use your whole hand but to brake you push down we've got no foot pedals at all here a little indicator stalk here a uh, few lights 32,000 miles on the clock a little pushy because i have got screen wash and a single windscreen wiper on both vehicles i think we are going to see some windscreen wiper action today a uh, little fuel gauge here and i've added a little 12 volt charger and an indicator flasher can that isn't really doing anything so that sort of takes over how they look. I suppose the next thing is going to be the question of how do they drive? And I think they're going to be very, very different indeed. I'm really, really looking forward to this. Right, because there are no um, side windows, I'm going to have to go with the old trusty head cam. So I hope that's going to be suitable for you. There you are. I can see you flashing away your recording. So uh, we shall jump aboard the uh, Bajaj and uh, go for a drive. So this should be fun. There we go, we've got ignition. So I'm gonna try the pull handle. There's no guarantee this will work, but there we go. And you can hear the engine has fired into life. Let's just pop around the back because it is quite a smooth little engine. I'm amazed for that for a one cylinder. Yeah, I like that very, very much. So already this is obviously my kind of vehicle. I've got no seat belt, so there's nothing holding me in at all. Um, but uh, we shall go clutch in. We shall go first gear. We should take the handbrake off down here. I'm gonna actually put some lights on because it's a bit gloomy. And we open the throttle and remove the clutch. And we're away. It's very, very sensitive. 
um, when you're in first gear, so we'll go for second. There we go, I've got to work on my gear changes a bit. But it actually sounds quite meaty. I, I, like, I like the noise very much. Uh, I've got to remember, I can't push the handlebars down to brake. And it's so much quieter than the um, last one I drove. So here we go. Got to work on those gear changes. Oh yeah, well now we're getting smoother. Remember my indicators are on my thumb. I could do with some switches like this. In took perhaps. But took took time. Uh, it's the people who run the caravan site here at Buttles. And uh, they use them to ferry passengers around to offer tours of the area and uh, to offer lifts up from some of the beaches to the car parks. So they are licensed taxis. This one isn't yet licensed. It's that new. And obviously with the pandemic, um, it hasn't yet had a chance to have any use, but it is a brand new vehicle, which is uh, very peculiar. So we're closing in on 50 kilometers an hour, which is um, getting on for 30 miles an hour. I'm gonna adjust that mirror up a bit. There we go. Here we go, onto a roundabout. This is slightly terrifying because I sit so much higher than in the Invercar. It just feels less stable, but I'm not sure it necessarily is less stable. Quite a talky little engine. I think it's just a single cylinder. Indicator on. There we go. I'm full throttle now. Oh, wrong way. Oh, I've lost my momentum now. I don't have any of these gearbox worries in Took. Bit of rev matching helps. Back into the 30 limit. The mirrors aren't really all that much cough they're not necessarily helping but yeah this is certainly a merry old adventure in this indian bajaj now bajaj might be a company you've never heard of but they're the third largest motorbike manufacturer in the world they are the outright largest producer of three-wheeled vehicles in the world so remember where the brake is There we go. Go on down to Saunders foot. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm taking fair, whoa, that's an exciting bit of road. Whoa, I was gonna say we're taking it quite gently, but we're apparently reaching towards the red on the speedometer. So given this is a brand new vehicle, we'll ease that speed down we're doing about 40 miles an hour such a strange driving experience i bet bajaj never imagined such a vehicle would be taking in this sort of terrain but yeah took took time do offer tours of the area if you fancy once such circumstances allow they even offer a diesel version in india i've not seen one of those in the uk yet I mean, petrol is preferred here but it is a four-stroke engine, so it is relatively clean in terms of emissions. In fact, I think the road tax is zero because they are pretty clean. But yeah, the wiper is um, pretty effective. We seem to have left the rain behind. Oh, 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 okay, the suspension's a little rough over the speed humps. I guess it has to be relatively tough to... Um, Oh, hello children. To uh, stop it tipping over. Certainly it gets plenty of attention and I think that's rather the point really. So if you want a different taxi, you can hail 
one of these vehicles. That big boom on the overrun is frankly hilarious. It sounds like you've got a proper meaty engine. The um, turning circle is um, excellent. Look at that. I can't do that in Tuk. So um, let's take you through reverse. If we go back into neutral there, I can release the um, clutch now. You pull this lever up. There we go. So I pull that lever up and then I put it back into first. And uh, when I remove the clutch, we go backwards and stall, apparently. Uh, I need to work on my um, technique. Okay, I'm going to use the electric starter. Wuss. There we go. Wuss mode engage. Uh, so let's try that again. Into reverse. Put off the brake. And I think that'll do us. Beautiful. Handbrake on. Put it back into forward. And silence. And then we shall turn the lights off as well. Wow. What an experience that was. Bringing a tuk tuk down to Saunders foot. What, an what a rusty motorbike. What an amazing place this is. Right, I think we shall go and get the Invercar and we'll see how the Invercar compares. Right, we've returned the Tuk Tuk. They have another one as well. So uh, available for hire here. And we're going to jump into the Invercar and see how it compares uh, as a vehicle. Uh, first of all, I actually have a seat belt. So that's a bit of a luxury. And uh, I have doors as well. So all mod cons going on in the Invercar. You pull the door like so. Pull it like so, and we'll have a bit of ventilation, I think. Let's make sure that's latched. Yep, jolly good. I put my seatbelt on, and uh, we start the engine like so. It's a Dyna start unit, so it's the starter motor, and it then charges. So it's a belt drive, very smooth start up. And we're away. It's only a little sluggish, because uh, she's cold, she's been sitting a while. Handbrake off. Uh, so that is braking. Got the indicators here. Throttle here, no need to worry about clutch. It's a centrifugal clutch, weights spring out, and everything works automatically. Uh, check blind spot as best we can. Build up the revs, the clutch engages, and away we go. Over the speed humps. So it's actually quite an easy drive, and then you just stop by leaning down on the handlebar. That was my biggest problem in the tuk-tuk is I kept forgetting where the brake was, the foot operated brake. I've got no pedals here. I can do what I like, but if we um, accelerate in the Invercar, speed builds readily, quite noisy though. And that's us at the 30 mile an hour speed limit. But it does feel more stable than the Tuk Tuk. And I think that's purely because uh, I'm sitting that much lower down. You feel very high up and exposed in the Tuk Tuk. Here I feel a bit more enclosed, a bit more space around me. Uh, well, we'll do a wiper test for you. Not the best having the controls over there. Could move them, but that's where they were from the factory. So that's where they'll stay. So recall it's going right at this roundabout. So you can corner quite hard really and it doesn't feel like it's going to tip up. But the reason they went for uh, uh, a single front wheel was primarily to keep the steering load quite light. It gets a lot more complicated if you've got more wheels. And while some Invercars did have steering wheels, some also had a tiller, which was just like one control that didn't have handlebars like this. That must be very tricky to control on a windy day. The Invercar sadly does get blown around an awful lot in the wind. And uh, today was quite terrifying at times. I think the Invercar is mildly better uphill. Uh, not superb by any means. At least I don't have to worry about downshifting. The continuously variable transmission 
adjust the gear ratio constantly. Because the main advantage of the tuk-tuk is you can actually take your friends with you. I can't take my friends. Passenger carrying is forbidden. Here we go then, national speed limit. And downhill too. That's 40 already. That's 50 and I think I need to slow down a bit. So it feels like a sports car compared to the tuk-tuk really. Exciting in the tuk tuk. Whoa! <laughs> it's even more exciting at 55 miles an hour. So I'm very glad we've moved on and no longer think this is an acceptable way for wheelchair users to uh, move about the place. They serve their purpose, but uh, the very name kind of told you everything that was wrong with um, uh, treating people in wheelchairs back in the day. The fact it's called an invalid carriage uh, suggests that somehow these people aren't valid. So uh, te the names have moved on. I know some horrible names were used towards the people who drove these cars. I don't need to see them in the comment. If you put them in the comments I'll delete them. We don't use that language anymore. We no longer treat uh, wheelchair users as being something to stand out and everyone tries to blend in now and I think that's so much better in terms of the language, in terms of the motability scheme where they can have a proper car, you know, perhaps with converted hand controls, much better than this. This offers an element of freedom but you can't take people with you, you can't carry your grandkids around, they're not very safe so I'm very glad we've moved on. Can we sneak around this hump? They're horrible in three wheelers. There we go, we'll neatly work our way around it. But yeah, I've had this up to 70 miles an hour, which is um, frightening. I don't necessarily recommend that. But it's been very interesting to compare it today with the Tuk Tuk. But yeah, generally, this, this is a lot easier to drive. Earlier invalid carriages had manual gearboxes, so you got all that on-hand, on-bar complication of the bajaj, um, even more so because you would have to brake somehow as well. But uh, yeah, this is so much easier. It must have seemed like a quantum leap back in the day. A turning circle of Tuk, not quite as impressive. Uh, as the Bajaj, but actually that's not too bad. You've done you've done quite well there too. And to reverse, we simply flick this little lever down here, and then we go backwards. Now I guess in theory, both vehicles can go as fast backwards as forwards. That's a slightly terrifying prospect, isn't it? But yeah, there we go. Took we've come to the beach, and there we go. We have now brought Took down to Saunders' foot. And uh, taking the view of this quite remarkable little tripod. Well, that was very, very interesting. A comparison between two very different three-wheeled vehicles. Only one of which I need to drive all the way back home again. And uh, to be honest, I think I'm glad it's the Invercar. The Invercar's just got that extra bit of grunt, uh, which is actually quite useful on the long-distance journey. I don't think anyone's ever described an Invercar as a long distance journey before, but then probably no one has ever compared one with a tuk-tuk before. Very much designed as an urban runaround and ideal for what they're doing here, ferrying campsite guests down to the, uh, the beaches or taking people from the beach up to the car parks or to some of the local viewpoints. Ideal for that. So if you fancy a tour with a difference, then check out Tuk Tuk Time and uh, yeah, you can have a ride yourself, perhaps in this very bajaj behind me. 
So thank you very much to Tuk Tuk Time for letting me um, drive this um, entertaining little vehicle. I really did enjoy that very much. And uh, if you're interested in more exploits of this little vehicle, you'll find plenty of them on my channel. Just search for Tuk TWC the Invercar. But thank you very much for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.